Hello and welcome. Here on my YouTube channel, I've documented in several videos the modifications that I've made to our travel trailer, which is 25 feet long, where, for instance, I added 2,650 watts of solar panels to it, inverters, batteries, and things like that. I also modified or removed appliances that were propane and added in electric appliances. So it's a fully electric travel trailer. And we've now traveled in it for about a month cumulatively across multiple trips in both the summer and in the winter. And I'm very pleased with all the modifications that we've made and it's been working really well. I have future videos coming that I've already recorded. I just need to get edited and published and then you'll be able to see how those trips went and how the trailer has performed. But today I wanted to address the winter effects and more specifically snow on the solar panels because, well, because it's winter right now. You see, I use the energy produced from our trailer every day, not just when we're camping, but when we're back at home, I actually produce a fair amount of electricity off the trailer, obviously, and I use that to charge my car. I have a Tesla Model S and we have many road trip videos as well. I want to make sure that the trailer is producing as best as it can year round, even in the winter, Albeit the winter, it's not great anywhere compared to, compared to as good as the summer. And I'll be getting into those particulars in a future video where I go over the performance of the trailer's array over this last year. In, in climates like where I am here in Utah, at this time of year, which is late January, the sun is at 30 degrees in the sky, which is pretty low in the sky. And the panels on the trailer are flat mounted. So the sun does it just bounces off a lot. The solar panels produce best when they are straight perpendicular to the sun. For rooftop solar panels that are on a house, typically they're just mounted to match the angle of the roof and that's a good kind of medium angle so that they're not as good in the winter and they're not as good at the summer solstice, but they're an average somewhere roughly. And, and that works fine. That's how my house is set up and it's been per working perfectly fine. And more importantly, when roofs are angled like that, a lot of times it's because the climate is where it snows and you don't want a flat roof just to have, be building up snow all winter except that my solar panels are that way. So it requires more effort. The, the solar panels on my house, the snow just slides right off. It doesn't take that much warmth or sun before the snow is gone. In fact, a lot of times it's falling off during the snowstorm because it's typically warmer a little bit while it's snowing than it is after the snow and it gets really cold afterwards. But with my travel trailer, the snow just stays there. Typically RVs have flat mounted solar panels because they're just mounted right onto the roof of the trailer. Uh, sometimes people will install a bracket system that can have some fly nuts undone and it'll be tilted so that it can match the angle of the sun in the winter. And that's a very good thing to do because the sun is so low in the sky here in the northern hemisphere where we are. There are some RVs that I've seen where they even have motorized brackets that tilt the panels automatically or they do it with a switch and all that's really cool and I would love to have been able to do that but ultimately I was limited to my budget and the time that I had and my skills and abilities and lack of garage and whatnot to be able to tinker with all of those electronics and I had a lot going on with the overall project build and it wasn't just focused on you know how to maximize solar yield on the roof so I just put as many solar panels as I could fit within that space. And I wanted it to be a simple mounting mechanism, if at all possible, and I achieved that by just using very large solar panels so that you only have to have a couple of attachment points to those big panels and it covers a large area of the roof. But that also means if you were to tilt these solar panels, the cross-section of wind that would catch them would be very significant and it, it could quite do quite a bit of damage if there was a, to be a microburst, for instance. So I ended up with just a basic flat-mounted solar array, but it is elevated above the roof so that it can be the entire roof of the trailer. I'll put a card above to the video that I made about how I ended up installing these solar panels. And so ultimately I decided to just install the largest solar panels possible and I was trying to find panels that the length of them, the, the longest side of them, would be the width of the trailer. And I achieved that within a, si a three inch margin on each end of the solar panels. And so I ended up with five 530 watt solar panels and they cover almost perfectly in the entirety of the trailer. So for instance, each panel is 7.47 feet long and it is 3.7 feet wide. If I had tried to build a tilting mechanism for these panels, the, the, the cross section of wind that could have caught them if there was any wind would be significant and it would had not been pretty, especially if they're tilted lengthwise, of course. If they were tilted on their short side so that only the uh, 3.7 feet was sticking up into the air, that would be less. But in that direction, they'd be tilting either forward or backwards and they would shade each other. They, they would eventually if the sun got low enough in the sky and that's when you need them to be tilted. And so ultimately, so that they don't shade each other, 
and the, the wind danger and the complexity of moving parts and driving down the road, I just decided to have it all be bolted down flat. When my trailer is parked at home, the rear of the trailer is facing south. So I do raise the tongue jack of the trailer higher so that it'll change the angle slightly, but that is an insignificant increase in production most likely. But maybe we can experiment with that today. And so that brings me around to the issue of today's video, which is snow doesn't go anywhere on flat panels. Uh, obviously it sublimates eventually or, or dehydrates and goes away. If it's a cold enough days in, in a series, the snow just will stay there. And I've experimented and depending on the weather and how close we are to freezing and how much sun there is, the snow will eventually melt away. Uh, but if it's really cold, it could last for a very long time. And if we were in a different climate where it was even colder still, the snow would just be there all winter. I would like to get some solar production from this trailer if at all possible. You know, ultimately I could just plug the trailer into my house the house would supply the electricity needed and uh, it would maintain the batteries. I would leave the mini split on at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the lowest that it can go. And it would keep the cabin just enough warm to protect the batteries and you know that sort of thing. But where's the fun in that? So I wanted to see if the trailer can be completely self-reliant at all times. And in this case, because of snow, it, re it requires some effort from me to go and manually push the snow off and it kickstarts my production to virtually instantaneously as soon as I push the snow off production is back up and it's not all that hard to do. In January of 2022 I had just finished installing my electrical system and I was experimenting with it still and so I did plug it into the electrical grid back then to and you know, charge the RV batteries off the the house. I did that once on January 1st and then I and, th and that was 1.53 kilowatt hours so pretty insignificant and then I did it again on January 14th where I was experimenting with a generator and in that time I put 0.93 kilowatt hours into the trailer. It is now just over a year later from that time frame, and I have not plugged my trailer into an external power source since then. It has been completely self-reliant, and I've been using the solar panels to you know, heat the batteries in the winter, cool them in the summer, and also charge the Tesla throughout. And in a future video, I'll be going over all of those dynamics. Now, my batteries are lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which is a lithium family, and as is typical with, I believe, all of them, you don't want to charge them if they are below a certain temperature because it will cause irreparable damage to them. And in the case of my batteries, which are from the manufacturer Battleborn, they state that you can charge down to 24 degrees Fahrenheit. My personal goal is to keep the batteries above freezing and generally I avoid keeping, letting them even be in the 30 degree Fahrenheit range at all. I like to keep them above that. There are multiple ways I could be heating the batteries. I could get heat pads and things like that, but I've already got a heat pump mini split in the trailer. So why not just use that? It's kind of the way I've been looking at it so far. I might change my mind in the future, we'll see. And yes, I can hear some people asking, hey, why can't you heat up the cabin and have that melt the snow off of it? Kind of like you do in your car, like a Tesla. Well, there is a pretty significant air gap between the trailer and the panels. Plus the trailer is well insulated on the top. I think it's around R20, uh, but in the right circumstances, specifically when the ambient temperature is pretty close to freezing and when the, uh, there isn't any wind to move that air, the, the, especially with this cover around the trailer, it does hold in the temperature pretty good. And this video shows where uh, it, you can see the heat from the trailer was coming up into the lower part of the solar panels and starting to melt off the frost in the morning. It would take a long time to do a lot of snow this way, but this was just some light frost and it actually does do it. In this particular case, I had the trailer set to, I think it was 88 degrees. So I was really trying to offload a whole bunch of energy because it was going to be a sunny day and I wanted to have space for that in the battery. With that context out of the way, now let's go push some snow off of the panels and let's see how that affects solar production. Obviously the production is going to go up, but inquisitive minds might want to know how much solar production is there with snow on the panels and then how much of a difference is there at the moment that we remove the snow from the panels. So let's go experiment. And so let's go over to the trailer together and push the snow off and let's check out the numbers. I will see you at the trailer. Today is a, a, a good example of a day where I probably normally would not have actually done anything because the sun is quite warm and the snow is not terribly deep. So is it really necessary uh, to push off this snow, this quantity? No, I, I only do it when it's still really, really cold out or it is uh, a lot deeper snow. So just as a side note, look over here, you can see this is what the solar panels look like on 
our house and you'll see that the snow is largely off of them. Not entirely yet, uh, but largely gone. Whereas if you look over here, this back panel for some reason is almost completely cleared off. And then these front ones still are covered. And uh, I'll put on the screen here the overlay of how much solar production there is at this very moment. I'm gonna grab my tool. Now, this is a floor squeegee. See, it's just got a rubber blade here. And it's not quite long enough, so <laughs> I duct taped a, uh, just a regular scraper on the end of it for your car windshield. And this has been working great for me this whole time. And sometimes when the snow is really deep, this is a little bit insignificant uh, in its ability to push the, the amount of snow it needs and have to do it several times. And because these are flat mounted panels as well, um, the water pools and that when, they, when the water evaporates eventually, that can be a problem because the uh, water contains um, various imperfections, minerals, who knows what, you know, it has picked up in the atmosphere on the way down. And so the, um, it leaves behind hard water deposits on the um, glass and that will affect production eventually. So that's one reason why I kind of do actually like pushing off the snow in the winter is because it enables me to clear off those hard, hard water, water deposits more easily because the, the physical action of the ice just scraping against the uh, glass helps to pull that off. At least that's what my observations have been. So here, what you'll see I'm fighting against is there is a little bit of, uh, there's like this layer of ice and the, the solar I've found actually will produce through clear ice like this. I'm just being a little bit of a perfectionist right now. So if I use the windshield scraper, it's got a harder plastic tip there and it will bust out that ice better. Now I've come out here before first thing in the morning. Right now it is 11.04 a.m. And so we have a a lot of sun ahead of us today. Well, maybe not a lot, it's still winter, uh, but the meridian, meaning the exact noon of the day, is at, let's see, I looked it up, it was 12.39. It's gonna be 12.39 p.m. today. And so the, I wanted to do this a little bit earlier in the day to actually get some of the sun. Uh, normally I would come out here more first thing. If I come out here too early, then the um, ice is still quite, holding onto the panels and it's not as effective. It will eventually melt away, but ultimately I just prefer to come out here when it's a little bit warmer because it's easier on me not having to be out here when it's this cold. So I just push away as much snow as I can reach from where the ladder is and usually I can get away with moving the ladder only twice. If it's really deep, sometimes I move the ladder three times because it's just harder to reach everything and when it's a deep, snow's really deep, you gotta push it more specific angles to get it to go anywhere. All right, so that's good enough. The sun will take care of the rest of the melting of the snow. Let's get you moved over to this head holder for the camera. That'll be easier for me. All right. It's a good tripod I just picked up recently. It works really well. Oh, and by the way, you'll see the cover here. I'll cover in another video later the modifications that we made to it, cutting out this, the roof of it so that it still covers the sides of the trailer, but it doesn't cover the solar panels, which is not what we want. Look at that, it's pushing off in one big sheet almost. That's nice, oh, and they got to the ice at the end. All right, let's switch it back over to the car scraper. Break through some of these trunks, the uh, ice, hits the aluminum edge of the solar panel. And that's what it's getting hung up on. There we go, I think I've gotten it. Ah, mostly. The sun will melt the rest of this in a short time at this level of sun. You can see it's quite the nice sunny day now. You'll notice too that all of the solar panels, because they cover the entirety of the roof, 
they're protecting the roof from some level of UV rays, probably the vast majority, and protecting it from like ice and water damming. I'm not saying I don't still ch check the seals and make sure they're watertight, but I think they'll last longer. Time will tell. All right, I think this is gonna do it. Just a few minutes and this will all be melted. So let's go back to my office and let's review this and kind of summarize the, the outcome. Oh, one other thing I wanted to do just as a quick experiment is the tongue height. So I'm gonna lower the tongue jack all the way to the bottom. And I won't make you wait for that, but when it gets to the bottom, let's check the production and see how different that is. And then we'll raise it all the way back up. All right, this is as low as the tongue jack goes. I just lowered it all the way down so we can see what the solar production looks like. And now I'm raising the jack all the way to the top and let's see how much the solar production changes based on just the tongue jack being able to change the angle of the sun. Well, I must say I am pleasantly surprised. The tongue jack changed the production more than I expected. Now, for what it's worth, most people wouldn't keep the tongue jack of the trailer all the way down anyway. Uh, however, as you saw over the course of a minute or so as the tongue jack went all the way to the top, that the power production increased by about 250 to 300 watts, which was a surprisingly large amount. As a side note, I wanted to show you what my trailer is capable of outputting on a day like today, which is January 23rd, 2023. Perfectly sunny day, at least at the moment. And you can see that here at the meridian of the day, the middle of the day, it's producing 1,359 watts. So that's kind of cool. Uh, obviously it peaks much higher than that in the summer or the spring months actually. The biggest limitation is just that the days are so short. So it, it, it only can charge the battery up about half of the battery in a day. I'll put a card above to the video that I made uh, last year, which was the winter solstice test to show how much power can be produced on the shortest day of the year. In summary, you may be asking, do I think it's worth the effort to remove the snow from my solar panels on the trailer? I would say that I do like to get energy as much as possible from my trailer. I mean, keep in mind that as much energy as I can get from it eventually goes towards the return on investment. I'm paying myself back the money I spent on buying it with the electricity that I'm using. That being said, uh, if it is going to be a nice sunny day and there's snow, there's snow on the solar panels, then I think it's worth pushing the snow off for a good full sunny day. If it's gonna be partly cloudy and kind of mixed weather, a lot of times I'm busy enough, I don't really bother to do it. And if it's gonna be a series of gray days or there's even multiple days with snow in the forecast, I don't even bother. And the snow potentially builds up over several days and gets icy and whatnot. And I just wait until the next sunny day is coming along, wait for a couple of hours in the morning for that sun to soften the ice. And then I can just push it off like you saw in some of these videos. I will say that when there's about four inches of snow or more, then the solar production is virtually zero. But if there is less than that to varying degrees, then there is, you know, when it's sunny, there is sun coming through and it's actually generating. As you saw in the video today at the beginning, that back panel was um, cleared for some reason already. And it was, uh, it's on its own solar charge controller. So it was producing a lot and the whole system was producing 400 watts at that point. The uh, front four panels are on a separate larger charge controller and they are in series parallel. So the front two are in series with each other and then the two middle are in series with each other and then those sets of two are in parallel with each other. Just to give you an idea of the architecture and the wiring behind these panels. So I, I think it's a great thing to be able to do. I like to go up there and make sure that they're producing as much as they can. But if I'm busy or if we're out of town, for instance, then I don't know anything about it. And also keep in mind, I'm managing the HVAC system, the, H, the mini split, um, and I'm monitoring the system all through Wi-Fi. So I don't actually physically go out into the trailer for a month at a time throughout the winter, uh, but I'm managing it in, on a daily basis. If you're interested in videos like this or others that I've talked about that I'm going to be making of our road trip travels in our trailer, in our Tesla, other evaluations of this system and its production, then feel free to subscribe to my channel and you'll get notified if you change that bell notification all. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.